Well, you told me about the stones would need dressing once, and eventually they would need dressing. And who who'd you say uh, was the person that would do that or could do that? Old Uncle Bob Ashley was the one that uh, they called it picking the rocks. It was a steel, a sharp-ended steel hammer, and he'd sit down there and and pick uh, the take this box apart and lay the rock that moved over on its uh, side and it had grooves in it called furs. That's where that meal, whenever it was, uh, the corn would get in there and get in them rocks and come out through them furs and when it got up on top of them furs is when it ground it up. But he'd pick them, and when they got wore down to where them furs was too shallow, he'd go in there and make new furs. Pick them out and dig them out and make them deeper. And they had to have them furs in there in order to, <coughs> to make the meal. But the one that uh, was stationed there, he picked both of them. They called it sharpening the rocks. I think you told me the other night uh, about another man had a grist mill, but his stones laid on their old man, side. Old man Henderson Prince, he had one. And his was them two-foot rocks, big ones. But he had a steam engine that pulled his, and he didn't have no trouble pulling that big rock. And But his rocks laid down? Yeah. One uh, on top of the other one? Yeah. And he, he found out that... <laughs> Old Uncle Bob was the only man in the whole country could sharpen them rocks. And back then you didn't get no paper, nothing much. But he got a hold of the old man and hired him to come up there and sharpen them rocks. And gave him $25 to do it. And back then, $25 was equal to 100 or 200 now. Or more. Or more, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> because back then, I've seen the old man stand down there and beg people <coughs> to buy a bushel of meal for a quarter. <laughs> when you say old man, are you referring to Henderson or Bob? <laughs> Uncle Bob? Uncle Bob would. He would beg people to buy... A bushel of meal for for a quarter, and nobody didn't uh, need to buy it. They all had their own corn, and <laughs> could have it ground and make all the meal they needed. Hmm. <laughs> there wasn't nobody to buy it. And I remember back then, sorghum molasses was twenty five cents a gallon, and that's the reason why I said that twenty five dollars. You can imagine. Uh, what it was worth to a man. Mm. Uh, <coughs> we growed cotton back then <coughs> for sold it after it was gin for four and five and six cents a pound. That was uh, amounted to when it was four dollars a pound it was four dollars for a hundred pound of cotton. A bale of cotton weighed anywhere from five to six hundred pounds. If it weighed six hundred pounds and you got six dollars a pound, you got uh, thirty-six dollars for a bale of cotton that you had worked that year to grow. Hmm. And back then... Uh, well, how many, acre, how many acres do you think it would take to produce a bale of cotton? Uh, most of the time, we'd get a, a bale of cotton off the acre. And 
We'd always get three or four bales of cotton a year. He had a shangle mill, and they eventually, at first, they cut shangles by mule power. It had a, a long uh, log tree, a whole tree, fastened up on, on the side of a tree, and this shangle knife frame set under the end of it, and a chain went up around this log and hooked on the top end of that shingle frame, tank, uh, knife frame, and it had a merry-go-round deal to hook the mule to. And it come around in them uh, timbers, when it, the timber, they had a log in the ground there with a, a I don't know what to call the deal uh, that come out of that log that this thing come around and caught. And that log was hooked to the bottom end of that shingle knife. And when that thing went over, it pulled a knife down and cut the shingle. Hmm. And that log tree there uh, was, a, was limber. It would bend when it would come down, and it would pull the knife back up. Hmm. 